Hello and welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel. Now some of you may know I've been looking to replace my 981 generation Porsche Boxster GTS with my real world dream car, the Porsche 718 Cayman GT4. You might have seen I did pay a deposit for one but had to reject it and I'm struggling to find another that meets my requirements. It's not all bad though, this has given me more time to think with my head and less with my heart and consider the alternatives that are out there. The most obvious is the 718 Boxster Spider, which is basically an open top Cayman GT4. But unfortunately, I just couldn't live with its manual hood operation after the super slick one you get with a normal Boxster. However, just beneath it in the range is the 718 Boxster GTS 4 litre, which is basically an updated version of my own car. It's got the detuned engine from the Cayman GT4, which produces 400 horsepower, 70 up on my 981, which means it's in a different league performance wise, but being just a mild facelift, it should retain all the things I love about my old car and fix the bits I don't. Well, that's the theory anyway, to see if reality meets expectations. Porsche GB have very kindly loaned me this Python Green GTS 4 litre so I can share with you the differences between these two cars in a classic Volkswagen head-to-head -head comparison video. So let's get the ball rolling by seeing how they compare on paper. So now we're going to compare the car's vital statistics as if we were playing a game of Top Trumps. If you don't know what Top Trumps is guys, just ask your parents. Let's start then by talking about money. 981 GTS when it came out in 2014 was £55,000. This car with options is £65,000. 718 GTS 4 litre today, base price £75,300. This car with options £86,330, so £21,000 difference. Sounds like a lot until you look at the Bank of England inflation calculator and you see that £65,000 in 2014 is actually £85,000 today. So there's not a lot in it. And when you look at the spec with the options, they are pretty much identical, but we'll talk about the options shortly. Now let's talk about the engines. Good news is they're both in classic Porsche style, naturally aspirated flat sixes. Mine is a 3.4, the 718 is a four litre. Mine produces 330 metric horsepower. 718 produces 400, so that's 100 horsepower per litre, which is really impressive for a normally aspirated engine. Torque, we've got 370 newton meters versus 430. That's actually 10 newton meters more than the manual GTS 4 litre. It's the same torque as the GT4. 0 to 62, 4.7, pretty good. Four seconds dead for this, which begs the question, how fast is the GT4 then? If the GTS is four seconds, well, the manual GT4, is 4.4 seconds, so 0.4 of a second slower than the GTS PDK, and the GT4 PDK is only 3.9, so 0.1 of a second quicker. So this is a really, really fast car, do not mistake that. Top speed 173 versus 179, and the weight, apparently this is 1375 kilograms versus 1510, so 10% heavier, but I cannot believe that going by the performance stats, so that might be not a level playing field. Now let's talk about the size. They're based on the same platform, so they're pretty similar, but there are differences. The 981 is actually 13 millimeters longer, at just over 4.4 meters. It's all in the bumpers. It must be because the rest of it is pretty much identical. The width is the same at 1.8 meters when the mirrors are folded. Without them folded, the 718 is 16 mil wider, so 8 mil per side, because the mirrors are actually bigger. Height, this is 1273 mil versus 1262, so this is apparently 11 millimeters lower, but it doesn't look it, so that's a bit weird. Wheelbase, the distance between the wheels is identical because they are the same platform. And luggage capacity, this is really interesting. Both have a front, a front trunk of 150 liters. At the back, according to this, the 718 is 10 litres short at 120 versus 130 for the 981. We'll have a look later, but I don't know if that's just a typo. Fuel tank, 64 litres for both. It's quite a good tank, you get over 400 mile range. MPG, 34 combined for this, 28 for this. I thought this was good though until I drove this, so I reckon this is more economical. So don't think you're going to have to spend more on fuel if you buy a 4 litre over a 3.4. I just don't think this MPG figure is representative. It's got cylinder on demand technology and I saw over 40 quite easily yesterday. I don't think I've ever seen over 40 on this car, even though it does mid thirties a lot of the time. Right now, let's talk about the standard equipment and the factory options on these two cars. Now it's often said that options maketh the Porsche, but what's really interesting about these two cars is what's been made standard 
on the 718 that was an option on the 981. For example, we have Porsche torque vectoring, mechanically locking rear diff, PTV, cruise control, satin black wheels, park assist front and rear, sound package plus, PCM with navigation, heated seats, digital radio, it's all that standard. And it was optional on 981. Amazing, my car's got, I think, all of that, but it's very, very rare and it does make this a great package already. On top of that, this car's got 11,000 pounds worth of options. We've got Python green paint, which you probably love or hate, 1,658 pounds, which is pretty much a dead match for the Carmine Red on my 981, which was just under 1,600 pounds. We've got Isofix child seat mounting points on the passenger seat for 140 pounds. Not that important. What is important is that we've got the PDK seven speed automatic gearbox, 2,532 pounds. Buy then on main headlights in black, including Porsche dynamic light system. That's 1,010 pounds, which doesn't really sound that much different to what was standard on my 981. We've got park assist front and rear, including reversing camera, or well, park assist front and rear is standard, so that's really just the reversing camera, £509. The bane of my life when I'm looking for a second-hand Porsche, two-zone automatic climate control, £593. I will not buy a Porsche without it. It should have been standard. Bose surround sound system, £917. Well, actually, probably money well spent because there is quite a lot of road noise, and I don't think the standard system is very good at getting over that. This is an interesting one then, GTS interior package and GTS interior package crayon. You have to have them together, it's about £3,700. And it basically gives you the GTS interior that the GTS should have as an extra cost option. Very strange, that one. We'll talk about that more when we do the tour of the interior. So £86,330 today as it is. Sounds like a lot of money, but it is a lot of car. It's now the time of the video where I like to remind you guys how you can support the channel. The easiest way to do that is simply to subscribe. We're still getting a lot of views from non-subscribers and whilst it's great to have the views, it's not so good for the longevity of the channel. So if you like what you see and you want Volkswagen to be around in 2024, then please, please do subscribe. The other way you can support the channel is to buy my Porsche Boxster GTS. It's currently on sale on Autotrader for £45,000, which they say is a good price. It's got 10 grand's worth of options, which means it's a really complete spec. It's in great condition. It's got full Porsche history with the last one by a specialist. And it's just come back from Venice, did 2,500 miles, did not miss a beat. So it's in, you know, perfect working order. It comes with six month warranty wise cover. You can have 12, 24, 36 for a discounted extra cost. I can deliver it and I will consider good cars in part exchange. So if you're interested, get in touch with me directly, andrew at volkswizard.co.uk, and then I can buy its replacement, which should produce loads of great content for the channel. Well, guys, as you can probably tell, these cars are based on the same platform, which came out back in 2012 when the 981 Boxster was launched. There were a lot of changes over the previous 987, but the most important one for me was that the designers were at last allowed to design unique doors for the Boxster. Up until this point, they'd had to use 911 doors, and that meant the car was never as sleek as it could be. But with the 981, they took full advantage of that freedom and produced a beautifully proportioned car, which even nearly 12 years after launch still looks incredible. So when it came to the 718, which came out in 2016, quite a long time ago now, they didn't have to do an awful lot to it. I'll Let's just cross off the panels I think are different and it is quite subtle because it is really just a facelift. So obviously bumpers, sill covers, wheels are slightly different. The mirrors are bigger and they've got a hollow bit where they mount onto the body. So they're all one piece on the 981. Wings, initially I thought they were the same, but they're not. They're a the headlights are a little bit smaller at the top. So that's definitely different. Something I've only just noticed is the door handles. So these are the more modern Porsche style. And that is a little bit different. As you can see, the sills are just rounded down here. They're a sharper edge on the 718. At the back, once I've seen this, I cannot unsee it. The rear lights are massive on the 981. While they're quite small and sleek on the 718, never been a big fan of the back of a 981, well, maybe from some angles, but from a lot of angles, it just doesn't look that great. 
but the 718 for me works better i don't know what it is the spoiler isn't that much bigger but i think because it's got black under here it looks bigger the big area of nothing here is broken up by the reflector because we've got tinted rear lights the diffuser well, i actually prefer the 981s um, but the exhaust is spaced out on the 718 which i think makes it look wider on the 981 they're sort of right in the middle of the car generally when there's a facelift they change the wheels significantly because it's cheap and easy to do there is definitely some different styling there's a lot this is like a harder edge here while on this car it's all curved but they're still 10 spoke and ostensibly the same it is worth mentioning that the wheels and tires are exactly the same size on the two cars so 20 inch wheels all round 265 3520s on the back 235 3520s on the front the 981 was homologated for goodyear and pirelli's and i'm not sure about other tires on the 718 but this car's got pirelli's while we're down here let's have a look at the brakes hello splodge so we've got really tiny little brakes on the back here and we've got this car the 981's front brakes on the back of this car no kidding these are 330s these are 299s this is the four piston caliper two on each side if you look at the front of the 981 two on each side so that's cool 330 and then got these big boys on the front so six piston 350 discs and they look like two piece as well which are really unusual on a porsche though they've definitely gone hardcore with the brakes because of the amount of performance this car produces compared to the 981 it needs better brakes they are marginal on this car to be perfectly honest let's quickly have a look at the front because for me this is the most disappointing area of the 718 on the 981 we have this big hungry air intake like a focus rs which makes it totally different from the front to the lesser models in the 981 range 718 it's got this big thick strip of color and yes it does have quite a lot of scooping for air but it's not anything like as aggressive as the 981 so i think a win for the 981 at the front a win for the 718 at the back right now let's have a look inside starting with my trusty 981 now whenever i get in my boxster gts i'm always blown away by how luxurious it feels we've got alcantara on the seats center armrest door cards glove box bottom of the dash here and not only that we've got leather on the tops of the doors and on the tops of the dash including the instrument cluster cowling that's normally reserved for 911s it's an expensive option on boxsters but it is standard on the gts and it really does make it feel special the seats are the standard ones as well you can have 18-way adjustables you can even have bucket seats but i wouldn't waste your money on those because these are perfect i've done hundreds of miles in the day and I've never had an ache from them. They're supportive and they're grippy because they're Alcantara. You can spec leather on the GTS, but I think Alcantara suits the ethos of the car, which is meant to be a sporty one. There is an interior package if you want to jazz it up a bit, which gives you red stitching on the seats, the carpets, the door cards, and gives you the GTS logo in red as well. Also, the inlays, instead of being aluminium, a carbon fibre. It looks amazing, but I think it was a couple of thousand pounds, and you can spend that money better elsewhere with dual climate, cruise control, even Porsche Talk vectoring. Standard seat, standard interior is very, very acceptable in this car. Let's have a look at material quality. So the carpet quality is lovely. You've got that corduroy carpet there. Even the floor mats are lovely. This plastic's a bit cheap, but then... It's probably designed to be replaced because it's so easy to scuff you can spec it in leather but what's worse than scuffing plastic yeah scuffing leather nice hefty metal door pulls as well right let's quickly nip into the 718 okay so as you can see it's not night and day different the real difference with 718 is that if you have the standard interior you have a very basic interior but you have plastic down here plastic up here so it really doesn't look special I don't know how they can get away with charging you extra to have a GTS interior in a GTS, but they do. It's just under £4,000. It's annoying because this car's just over 75 and with that you're getting on for 80 and you haven't even started specking it. So this car has got the GTS interior. So we've got Alcantara here, contrast stitching in crayon, 
carbon fiber here it looks amazing better than mine but remember mine was standard this was 3700 pounds we have got the same seats though just so they've got stitching in crayon rather than gray and that in crayon as well so yeah adjustable electrically of the backrest and then up and down back and forth manually got the net which mine's got as well so as you can see yeah there's not a lot in it if the the air vents are slightly different and the stopwatch for sport chrono is set back on this car but it's probably just change for change's sake we've got the wind deflector just like on the 981 pdk shifters the same but we're we're missing a few buttons off here because they're on the manatino well we'll just get in the 981 now and have a closer look at the controls so this car's got the sport design wheel as standard it's got pdk it's got these lovely alloy paddles which have got a really nice action to them which i think has gone from the 718 but we'll find out when we drive them back to back same shifter more buttons on here because we don't have the manatino we have a completely plain steering wheel well sort of because when you change modes these bits illuminate and there's one there for launch control which i honestly have never used we've just got plain black instrument dials if you have the extra package in here with the carbon fiber you can i think have carmine red for the rev counter but how can you beat white on black we've got the best cup holders in the business just like in the 718 why would they ever need to improve those slightly disappointing though on both cars is the a pillar which is this horrible sort of scratchy plastic on caymans i've seen with alcantara this is always alcantara race text into the roof lining as well climate controls the same again factory option on both cars unbelievably cruise they have made standard on the 718 at last and you don't have this four stalk here which is a very easy way of controlling the trip computer there which is sort of the only sort of lcd bit of the cluster it's so easy to operate you go in and out back and forth instead now you do it on a fiddly little button on the steering wheel so i think that's a backward step and i love the plainness of the steering wheel but again change for change's sake auto headlights yeah but anyway this is a, a lovely car to be in roof up or down and the 718 especially with the interior pack is even better so yeah same plastic quality same carpet quality very similar pedals this all looks identical we've got the bose sound system on here that's the only real difference So in here, because we've got the top interior package, we've got the rev counter in crayon. So the white isn't really that different to crayon, is it? So it's much easier to see white on black. We have got the same shifter. Now on both cars, Alcantara wheel and gear shifter were standard on both cars. That's been specced out to leather as a no cost option. Hood controls here center armrest which only opens on the one side which is really annoying on both cars slightly different air vents headlight switch is the same the key is basically the same but the icons for open and close are slightly different just want to show you quickly apple carplay because if you own a 981 you will be very envious of this so firstly connect your phone via the port in the center armrest there and there's the apple carplay button and then the touchscreen works really well everything works well even amazon music by and large which on a lot of cars doesn't it's super fast beauty sounds and i use waves i used that yesterday did 221 miles and it works perfectly got me around the m25 uh, to chelmsford from reading and back here to warwickshire without issues so yeah already a big reason to upgrade to 718 is this okay let's quickly talk about the steering wheel it's quite different to the unadorned one on the 981 there's quite a lot going on so firstly we've got the manatino switch for changing the modes as you can see it's changes there on the dash there's an individual mode as well for the first time so you can mix and match just like on a golf you do need to be careful though because if you select sport plus while you're going around a corner it will drop from seventh to third and the car may not like that also we have got these scrollers 
here so they scroll up and down and then you just press it in to select what you want it's okay but it's a little bit fiddly i do miss the stalk that used to be here on the 981 that's now this black piece of plastic that doesn't really match the rest of the cowling and rattles a bit as well okay now let's have a look in the boots because this unlike say in an Audi R8 is a very good feature of these cars that means you can you can go away and properly enjoy them on proper roads okay so 150 litres in both and nothing has really changed not even this cover here that covers the battery and a few other bits hasn't been redesigned at all I think yeah so a great boot fits a suitcase in there and some other bags as well and then you've got like the locking wheel box here and some tools in there I think tire foam as well no spare wheel obviously in the back again a good boot we use sort of soft hold alls in there and just fit it right up all the way in there as well and get loads of stuff in there for such a practical car i'm not sure why this is 10 liters less though than the older car cannot see how that can be hmm curious okay now we're going to see if porsche made the hood of the 718 go up and down faster than in the 981 with a head-to-head -head hood test on your marks get set go, go. Okay, and now to put the hood up. Go! Stop. Stop! And that with a win for the 981 against all odds. Now it's time for you to see how these two beautiful boxes actually drive because that's what it's all about with a Porsche. Okay, let's start off then with my trusty 981 Boxster GTS. I've had this car um, for about one and three quarter years and I've done 18 and a half thousand miles in it. I cannot believe that. I've got other cars I drive as well. That just shows you how much I've really, really enjoyed it. It fits me like a glove. It fits on the UK roads like a glove. Today, this car feels impressive. Back in 2014, it must have been, yeah, mind blowing. That's why all the reviews were so good. There's one little annoyance, which is the electric parking brake. It doesn't go on automatically and it only comes off when you're, you've are you got your seatbelt on and uh, the door's shut, which is pretty normal. But I think the not going on automatically is really, really annoying. And the 718, I think, is exactly the same and I haven't tweaked that. Apart from that, it's a fantastic car to drive. As I will demonstrate, it's just, just as everything. Well, obviously it doesn't carry four people, but there's taxis for them. So in this default mode, it's, it's plush. The gearbox is super smooth. The noise is subdued, even for a convertible with big tires, there's not an awful lot of road noise really. This is quite a coarse road. And this is why I love it. You can just drive it all day. I've driven it all day for many days. And when I'm worn out at the end of it, I just want this car in this sort of comfort setting. But when you are in the mood, all you have to do is press this little button with a shock absorber on it. You don't have to have the loud exhaust or the sharper throttle or heavier steering. You just want that, press that. I'd probably highly recommend you use manual shifting for a bit more control. And now it feels more like the Porsche you remember. I used to have a 997.1 Carrera 4S. It had the PASM button. It was harder or harder. This is now firm but when I want it to be firm, and now I want it to be firm, I'm driving on my own, the roads are quiet, and we've got some incredible corners that uh, this car just dismantles. And it's still got some compliance, it's not never crashy, but when you find these sweepers like this S when we're coming up to, we are now one of the best cars on the road to enjoy this oh. until you find a farm vehicle in front of you it's probably a good time now 
to demonstrate this car's other side. So let's go and find a road a little less perfect. Okay, now it's a little bit too firm for this road. So we'll just press this button. And we have that loose limbed ride back. That means the tires are in better contact with the road. I'm not getting a headache. And I can enjoy this classic British B road. Now, it's not like a magic carpet ride. There is some deflection, but it's a very soft edge deflection. And that's important because it's unusual for a sports car. I think it's why I've kept this car for so long, because it just can do so much. Granted, the firmer mode may not be firm enough for the track, but I'm a firm believer the S in GTS stands for Strasse Street. So I, I have no aspirations to take this car on track. So yeah, here we are, bobbing along a British B road, just like we're in a pretty normal golf. Well, apart from the fact, we can do this. And the brakes, they're not huge, they are lovely and feelsome. You're feeling the braking increase the harder you press, and there's no ABS activation, which you would get even on a dry day like this on a, a lot of cars. Also, if you've got it in fully automatic mode, the box shifts down for you to help you brake. Like that. So we've got 333 horsepower. It's, it's fast enough. It's not that heavy. Uh, just under 1,400 kilograms. I've never wanted more. No. Probably a good time to talk about the exhaust then. Now, if you're into cars, you'll probably agree that the noise a car makes, particularly the engine and exhaust and induction, are a big part of the enjoyment. And I don't think there are many cars that are better than the 981 GTS from standard. Miltech would not have liked this car because it sounds just perfect. Now we're not, this is the normal mode and it's got some bellow to it still. If you bury the throttle deep enough, the valves open. Then we have sports exhaust mode. and pop there if you want more put it into sport plus can you beat that can you can anyone oh dear oh dear need I say more I think the 718 has got a lot to live up to so let's see how it compares okay let's start off with some really good news before we even turn a wheel this 2023 car has got none of the nannying electronics that we've had to get used to in other cars for the past five years. So no front assist, no lane assist, no emergency city braking, not even adaptive cruise control. There is still a degree of emissions control going on because we've got a four litre engine in 2023 and it's normally aspirated. So I think that's a price worth paying. As on the 981, we've still got the start stop system, but that engages before the car stops on the 718. That's fine. You can turn all this off, by the way, just by pressing the start stop button. Instead of the coasting function PDK 981s get, which drops the engine to idle 
and disengages the gearbox to save fuel when there's no load on the engine. We've got cylinder on demand technology and that will work on both manuals and automatics. It cuts half the cylinders off when there's no load on the engine to save fuel. It swaps from left bank to right bank so that the, um, the cats stay warm and it's very clever. I've seen over 40 to the gallon on a pretty slowish drive from Reading to Chelmsford. I've never seen 40 in my 981. So that's why I said earlier, don't worry about fuel consumption in this car. I think it's much better than the figures might suggest. The other thing we haven't got is keyless entry or keyless starting again. We don't need that, so I don't miss it. It's worth pointing out the driving position over the 981 hasn't changed at all. It's still pretty much perfect. We're in a low car and you can sit low. The other thing that I need to point out is that this car has got the reversing camera and it can be a little bit slow to switch the image off the infotainment screen. Let me show you. When I picked this car up from Porsche GB, I literally did not know whether to turn left or right at the end of their car park. I set the nav, but I couldn't see the nav because the reversing camera screen was still on. So it's on now, I will reverse, and now I'll select drive. I'm still in drive. I'm still in drive. Why do I want to see backwards? I'm in drive. Okay, maybe it'll go off when I start moving. So right, which way do I go now? I want to go left or right. Why are you still on the screen? It's still on. It's still on. It's a nice shot. I can see the Python green. It's still on. It's still on. It's still on. It's off. Now let's talk about ride and handling. One of the best features of my 981 was the fact that it was uh, super comfortable in the default damper mode and uh, it was as firm and poised as you wanted it to be if you selected the firmer damper mode. In this car, it's, it's, it's firm and it does feel more like the kind of Porsche you would expect because the 981 felt super comfy. It might be because it's done 50,000 miles and they've got a bit soft, but when I bought it at 29, it still felt um, quite comfy. And it felt really well judged for British roads. And when you're tired, you don't want to be bobbed around. So, but when you're in the default damper mode in the 981, it can feel a bit of a pudding and you're not always in, inclined to just switch it to sport when you find a nice bit of road like this one. So the good news is, in the default mode, this car feels more dynamic than the 981. And that's important in this car. It's firmer, but also it, it just makes you feel more engaged with the car. When you turn into a corner, there's a beautiful feeling of sort of leaning on the rear tyre sidewall, which you get with Porsches. And because this car's a bit more taut at the rear end, you get that a lot more often. And that means also you can feel the rear steering a bit more. You still get that in the 981 if you go into the firmer damper mode. But in this mode, in this default mode in this car, it feels a lot sharper. So it steers beautifully as well. Again, it's got a lot less slack in it. But then the 981 in the firmer damper mode is similar to this. So on this kind of corner now, you can just turn in and then get on the gas early and you can kind of just not steer as much as you need to with the steering wheel because the rear axle is helping you around. It's delicious and you can enjoy that deliciousness all the time in this car, but it does unfortunately come at a price. Okay, so we're now getting onto a classic British B road, the kind of road where you should be able to enjoy a sports car at usually 60 miles an hour and 60 miles an hour feels fast in a car like this so it's a thrill you know at relatively sane speeds the only problem is in the uk that they're um, usually pretty badly surfaced i mean this is this is the well surfaced bit of this road and i can already feel every little ripple in it and this by the way is the default damper mode the sport damper mode it's actually not that much harder.
yeah, there's not an awful lot of um, travel happening in the suspension right now. But in the 981 switch from one to the other, you know it. In this, it's hard and harder, and that's a bit harder to, to, to feel. So anyway, back in the default mode. This road opens up in a bit. You can watch how I bob around now. Very turbulent. The pilot would be putting the seatbelt warning sign on right now if this was a flight. And it's giving me, it is giving me a little bit of a headache. We can't blame the wheels and tyres. They're pretty much, well they are identical in their dimensions to the 981. Tire pressure is an interesting point, point one of a bar higher, but I don't think this turbulence is accounted for purely by that. There's definitely a firmer suspension setup, which ties in with this car feeling a lot more hardcore than the 981, even on paper. So now let's let's talk about the engine then. So with the 981 we had a slightly boosted Boxster S engine. In this car we've got a detuned GT4 engine. And like I said before, the on-paper stats are ridiculous. 3.9 for the GT4 PDK, 4 seconds dead to 62 for the GTS PDK. And allowing for tolerances of engines, do you think maybe a GT4 PDK could actually be slower if it was a bad one? It's, it's really close and that's unusual because normally the hierarchies are set by the marketing department and they usually put a bit of clear air in there, but I guess price-wise, these cars aren't that different. Turning circle is amazing in this car, actually. It really does make it easy to live with. Right, let's talk about that engine then. So it's got a, a bit more torque. It's got 70 horsepower more, 330 to 400. It doesn't sound like a lot, but actually in practice, it feels more than that. I think because of the Jeep 981 feels within your comfort zone performance wise, this is slightly beyond it, which is never a bad thing. So let's... this car it really is it doesn't sound that great but stay tuned for that I'm going to cover the sound in a completely different section so yeah if you wanted something a bit faster than your 981 GTS this is definitely a well worthy upgrade and bearing in mind the price allowing for inflation is the same I think that's a, a, a bargain the good news is with the uplift in performance we do have the uplifting brakes which I've talked about earlier in this video I'll demonstrate it now so this is from this is from this is from 60 oh that that was impressive I don't think this road surface was impressed but that was lovely and you could feel them working harder the harder you press it's not like some cars where you get beyond a certain point and they just uh, electronically work a lot like the, to the max that was the dp going the pedal the harder those pistons are biting the um the discs superb superb okay now that only really leaves the gearbox and the good news is this pdk is unchanged it's unchanged in its shifter in the cabin there's none of that stubbiness you get in 911s of this era it's not a bad thing and it's seven speed which means you have a high uh, seventh gear at 70 miles an hour it's just doing over 2000 rpm which explains why it's pretty good on fuel it's sharp um, and it's when you're not in the mood it's 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 really smooth so unlike the ride now which has gone hardcore this gearbox still remains the perfect Jekyll and Hyde you've got the manual mode which is fully manual another round of applause 
of a Porsche. And look, we've got the paddles. Let's not forget the paddles, they are metal. Disappointingly, they've got that little bit smaller, so now they look a bit more Volkswagen Audi, instead of looking a bit Ferrari. It's only like a few mil off the top. But actually, more disappointing, they seem to have lost the feel of the 981. I mean, my car's done like nearly 50,000 miles, but the paddle action feels a lot nicer than on this car, which feels like mine would have done at 150,000 miles. What is really interesting as an older 981 owner is that the clanks you get from my car, which I kind of might have thought might be down to its age, are actually still present and correct in this car with 2,000 miles on the clock. It's almost like they're trying to remind you that this might have electronics here and there, but they're controlling some big mechanical bits and pieces as well. And I, I quite like that. Okay, now let's talk about the thorny subject of the 718 GTS 4 litres sound. So we've got a flat six, we've got a sports exhaust. It all sounds really good, doesn't it? We haven't got four cylinders like the 2.5 version before it. You would think it would be, well, being a bigger engine, it would sound even better than the 981 3.4, but I'm not sure that's the case. Before we talk about the 718's exhaust sound though, there is another noise I want to talk about and it's this persistent sort of rattle from the engine. If you've owned a 986 or 987 Boxster, you'd probably be having sleepless nights. Probably don't have OPFs. If, if your 986 or 987 Boxster sounded like this, you'd probably be having sleepless nights. And it's always there, not just at idle, the engine's warmed up now as well, and apart from it sounding like the engine's faulty, it really does get on your nerves. I'm not sure whether it's because this car's quieter generally, you can hear stuff more, but yeah, I, th I don't know, I'll have to ask Porsche if that is how it should be. Anyway, let's talk exhaust. You can hear it now. And when you drive through villages with stone walls, it's really loud, even with the roof up. Anyway, let's uh, put that window up. Let's talk exhausts then. So there's no point even demonstrating the standard mode because it's so quiet. Let's just show you what it can do. So... one of those days for cars on the road today. So it does make a noise, um, but it's not really consistent. It does come in and out with the revs. At some times through the rev range, it can actually sound like a four cylinder engine. I know that sounds weird, especially with a 2.5 four cylinder predecessor. It's lost the rasp of the 981. It's there, but it feels like someone's trying to suffocate it with a big fluffy pillow. And it, you know, there is some resonance here and there, but it doesn't sound particularly inspiring. Okay, when you work it, it, um, it does sound a bit, a bit better, but at these kind of speeds in my 981, it would be singing.
So is it a muted voice all to do with petrol particulate filters? I'm not completely sure. I've heard cars with OPF fitted and exa exhaust taken off and they're still really, really loud. What happened at the same time as the requirement for OPF was strict to drive-by noise regulations. And that's why you get the feeling Porsche have tried to make this car as loud as they can within the regulations. If you work it really hard, it's, it's good. But when you drive it normally, which you will do most of the time, it is pretty subdued when the 981 is still sounding absolutely superb. Also, of course, we've lost the pops and bangs as well. Even in Sport Plus, keep on going for the wrong thing. That's Sport Plus now. Nothing. Is that necessarily a bad thing? Probably not. Saving you from yourself. I think, especially if you're a man of 50 plus like me. So is the 718 GTS 4 litre a worthy replacement for my 981? Well, it's certainly a lot faster, 0 0.7 seconds quicker to 60 is impressive. And not only that, it's better on fuel as well. The only dynamic area I could criticize on my car is the brakes and they've been upgraded significantly. The gearbox, which was perfect before, hasn't been touched. So that's perfectly fine. There are, however, two areas where for me, the 718 is a bit of a step backwards. Firstly, the ride. The 981 has got two damper modes. The default is lovely and compliant and works well on our UK roads. The sportier setting is probably for when you're driving on your own on smoother roads and it takes away some of the flow and you feel a bit more connected to the car. The 718 also has two damper modes, but the softest one feels like the stiffer one on the 981 and the stiffer one feels like you'd only ever really use it on track. I'm getting the feeling that Porsche maybe set this car up to set a lap time on a circuit somewhere that was noticeably quicker than in the 981 to show progress had been made but by doing that they've lost the beautiful compliance which was the biggest surprise about this car when I bought it. And then we have the noise. Firstly, let's talk about the ever-present rattle that's there at low speeds and low revs. I'm hoping it's a fault with this particular car, not a characteristic of the engine, because it's probably the biggest deal breaker. And then we have the exhaust noise. Well, you can't really blame Porsche too much for this car being a lot quieter than my older one. The world is a very different place today compared to 2012 when the 981 came out lots more emissions regulations and drive-by noise regulations and bearing that in mind I'd say Porsche have done a really good job with this car and if that is a problem for you then there's always the aftermarket. I think the easiest way to summarize these two cars is that the 981 GTS is basically a hotted up Boxster S while the 718 is a detuned GT4. That might sound brilliant especially considering that allowing for inflation they're actually pretty much the same price but for me it's another example of a little bit less actually being a little bit more but do not let that put you off buying a 718 GTS 4 litre because compared to what's available to buy today it's still a very good value and incredibly rewarding car and it's worth pointing out in about 18 months the internal combustion engine boxes are going to be replaced by an electric version and I'm pretty sure it won't be worth making a video comparing that with the 718, let alone the 981. So if you're thinking about buying one, get your order in now. I might even be joining you. As ever, guys, thanks for watching this Volkswizard video. Keep subscribing, keep commenting, and I'll see you for the next one very soon.